Lies of P, a child from a loving couple of Bloodborne and Sekiro. It is by far the best Souls-like game out there. Hold on, why, why would I say it's the best, you might ask? Because it's the only Souls-like I've ever played, so there is no contender with my roster. Today I'm gonna try to beat Lies of P for the second time. And also, still without being good. But this time, I have to use different weapons for each main boss. I'm referring to bosses that has blue glowing chalice before the arena. However, I'll be using some same handles for a couple times. I'm only changing the blades. Besides that, I can use everything. Consumables are allowed anytime, but I try not to use them as they can be quite OP. Also, I'm not allowed to level up my stats at all, so it's gonna be a level 1 run as well, or a uh, level 10 as we cannot go any lower for starting class. Before we start, I need to point out a mistake that I made. So during the recording, I was so immersed into the level 1 run and I forgot to change weapons until the start of chapter 3. So I use one weapon for two bosses. Yeah, I know it's my mistake, so I'll replace that with the two mini bosses at the end. Sorry, I butchered the run already, but hey, if you're still interested watching this, I love you. Technically, I never officially done any level 1 run, even in Elden Ring or Dark Souls, so I was a bit hesitant at first. For starting class, I picked Strength or Motivity because I picked Dex last time and I want to try a different build. This has a great sword with a perfect guard handle. This might come in handy later, or that's what I thought. Now, for you that haven't played the game yet, this game emphasizes a lot on parrying or perfect guarding, they call it, just like in Sekiro, and I'm terribly bad at it, no matter how much experience I had. For instance, like this Mr. Policeman right here. But he's nothing compared to the first main boss, the Parade Master. I remember beating this guy the first time without parrying at all. Well, you can actually do that, but I guess I want to learn to parry as well. The damage dealt from him wasn't that significant thankfully, and for the first boss, it is a very good learning curve that shows how this boss was intended to be defeated. I really like when he's tripping over nothing like a girl in romance anime. It's one of those that you can easily parry. I could parry him sometimes when he's swinging his mace, but I prefer dodging them. The fight was still a bit rough, but it's not hard obviously. Yeah, this is the part where I'm so anxious about my decision doing a level 1 run. I completely forgot to change my sword. So I'm still rocking the great sword for Mad Donkey, which is totally fine as he's only a mini boss. Alright, hear me out. For the record, I never done a single successful backstab in Elden Ring, but Lies of P gave me this weird feeling to backstab them more easily somehow. It is a bit inconsistent to find a good spot for backstabbing, but it happened quite often for me. He gave me a hard time before, but he's a cakewalk now. Feels good. If you played the demo, you might also recognize the four leg policeman as the second boss. I didn't play the demo, so I was a bit surprised at first, but I came prepared this time. Well, I mean, prepared mentally, but not physically. Still using the same weapon as this is the spotlight of my stupid mistake. But this boss is so satisfying to parry. I still couldn't parry everything, only the one chain attack that I can safely do that. He is a bit fast and sometimes I got caught off guard without realizing how far he can reach. Second phase, actually the same, probably with new electric additions. I think he only added discharge as his new move, everything else is the same with electric enhancements. Overall, it's not that hard even though I died a few times.
Since the game was quite linear, I tried to get as many stuffs as I can ranging from outfits to collectibles. I might need them in the future. There are a few encounters like this that I usually avoid, but as long as they don't take a long time, I make sure to unalive them. I got this weapon called Electric Coil Stick. I saw a lot of people use this weapon, but I missed it on my first run, so I'll make sure to use it this time combined with the Great Sword Handle. Remember the starter Pokemon from Scarlet Violet? That's right, that alligator turned into a robot. Just like the Pokemon, Fue Coco has the slowest speed among the Gen 9 starters. However, that slow speed that usually got me killed. I think this fight will be much easier if you not parry at all. Dodging seems to work perfectly on bosses that don't rely on range. This also applies on phase 2, especially when it starts shooting. Now, I gotta be careful with those black tar on the floor. They might be harmless when you step on it, however, they can create an explosion if frictions was made from Fuegoko's attack. Also, don't forget to take care of like all of these pipes, these giant pipes. I need them to take cover from the flamethrower. So I unlocked the P organ at this point, and honestly my build was very messy as I don't quite understand them yet. I usually focus on pull cells and stamina recovery, but I don't know. If I'm being honest, the mobs and the levels in general are more challenging than the boss in this game. Maybe you cannot really see it on this level, but later on they become more annoying. Yeah, I just need to kill this one for the capacity amulet. I'll use bigger and bigger weapons in the future, so I definitely need more capacity. Also, even at level 1 Vigor, you can withstand a direct hit if you upgrade your defense part. But the drawbacks are the better they are, the heavier they will be. I want to keep that in mind as well. Anyway, I feel very comfortable using the Greatsword Handle, so I equipped the Salamander Dagger on top of it this time. Most enemies in this area are weak to fire, so I think this weapon will do the job. Maybe sacrificing range was negotiable in this case. I know I'm avoiding using anything that didn't scale with motivity, but I don't have to widen my weapon variety later on. During this mission, I also met Alidoro, the merchant that sells remembrance items. Yes, I know, Elden Ring players, remembrance items, blah blah. Without thinking, I redeem all the weapons available. Andreas is a fun boss to fight. He gave me confidence in parrying on minimum level. His combos and rhythms are acceptably simple. However, my problem right now is range. With the greatsword handle, my dagger couldn't reach him and most likely to fumble the big window. Surprisingly, I still reach second phase, but this become more troublesome. After multiple unnecessary attempts, I decided to switch weapons. The Holy Sword of the Ark. These weapons can transform into super long sword or short regular one, just like my dip. Now for Andreas, I prefer using the long one just because it has better and faster movesets. I still have to parry almost every move on his first phase. That didn't change the strats, but it makes it easier for me to land some attacks since I don't have to worry about range.
Starting off phase 2. He might fool me the first time with his uh, new appearance, but his true self is actually his behind. His movesets changes a bit, but still similar as in first phase. He becomes very swift on certain moves, so I need to follow his new rhythm. At some point, he'll start charging lasers towards me. It's a one-hit shot and I have to avoid that by getting under his crotch, but shortly after, I have to move away real quick because he's gonna sit down super hard that might instantly kill me as well. I'm still trying things out for the rest of the run, what kind of weapons comfortable enough on certain level, and also I have to save up materials as some of them are limited in a single playthrough like Dark Moon of the Covenant for example. I think my main issue with this run is how fast the stamina depleted over time during and outside a fight. So I get this Patience Amulet which is the equivalent of Green Turtle Talisman in Elden Ring, basically regenerates stamina faster. I don't understand whoever thinks a duo boss fight was a great idea, but hey, surprise surprise, we got one in this game! There are four siblings of the Black Rabbit Brotherhood, but this fight, you only fight the elders while the other siblings take turns at certain moments. I can only parry the vertical chop from the elders because I couldn't match my timing well enough to trigger the perfect guard. The most annoying part was the other siblings. They don't deal much damage, but they're freaking relentless. Especially the youngest one. You might want to kill her fast. This looks like a dead end to me, but there's a reason why I'm still collecting runes at this point. To buy a bunch of consumables. Yeah, believe it or not, consumables in this game is busted as hell. That's why I only use them for emergency fights like this. Or probably the fight that I'm... suck at it. Even with consumables, I still need to adjust my room. Safe enough for me to throw. I use Salamander Dagger with Acid Handle to poke them in range. This combination was built only to deal with the youngest one. Before the siblings join the fight, I'll try to attack him normally, just so I can save some throwables in my pocket. Only parry a move that I feel confident at, which is not a lot. I'm lucky this weapon is quite fast. Now to deal with this little bitch, I gotta take advantage of the thrusting attack and carefully hit her. Remember, stamina management is crucial here. After that, it's time to throw things like you want to vandalize your neighbor's house. I threw as many as possible before the other siblings join the fight. The spear one is the easiest since it can be easily backstabbed, but the red scarf one is like the youngest but easier. So I'll be using the same method as the youngest. Alright, the rest just throwing stuff and finally it's done. This took very long, let's not do this again. Now, at this chapter, everything becomes slightly harder. I'm referring to mobs and mini-bosses. The human mini-boss wasn't troubling me too much as long as they can be backstabbed. I always try to kill them if the reward was anything related to clothing. And also, by the way, you probably agree with me that the clown in this game is just ridiculously annoying. I was planning to just run away from him, but he's too annoying to the point that I really want him dead.
Alright, I spent a very long time on my first playthrough fighting the King of Puppets, so this will be a no problem this time. Okay, um, I need some adjustments. <clears throat> uh, I guess my hands are a bit stiff. Alright, fuck, he's hot as ever. I'm currently using a pickaxe with glaive handle. This handle is quite good to shorten our distance for heavy attack. Works really great in first phase. I mean, phase 1 was quite easy. His attacks are not too delayed, but you can feel the pattern after a few tries. Usually, I just parry the slow winded one, and some moves are also more beneficial if I dash forward. Romeo kicked my ass so bad, even at early fight. Now it's the opposite from phase 1. I'm not gonna use parry, instead I'm gonna dodge all the way through. Only attack after he finished a combo, or when he walked casually to the side. And it worked! Until he infused his weapon with fire. Yeah, when he does that, there is a small window to interrupt with either heavy attacks, weapon art, or just attack him aggressively, but none of them work in my case due to my slow ass weapon. It's actually a staggered timing RNG from the beginning of phase 2. You have to time it perfectly so you can stagger him on that specific move, you know. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but at least that's, that's what I experience, that's what, that's what I see. You have to time it perfectly, you cannot land too many attacks at the early phase 2. So when you stagger him, at least once or like the second time, he got staggered when he's doing that specific move. It actually saves you from getting killed by the fire flurry. I can probably do that with faster weapon, but I love this weapon already and I don't want to switch. Yes, I know, the problem was on me. I'm a thick-headed motherfucker, okay? By the way guys, I have some throwables in my equipment. However, I'm only using throwing cells and shot put. Actually, you know what? I don't need throwing cells at all, but I miss my timing on this attempt. So I use throwing cells just to fast forward the fight. This is my resolve towards that crazy fire attack. Just throw one shot put on the right timing and that move is cancelled totally. Man, I beat Romeo on my first playthrough much easier apparently. Yeah, I was talking about the pre-patch Romeo. I'm probably gonna upload my first playthrough on my second channel, check it out. Anyways, Lorenzini Arcade and Grand Exhibitions are one of those confusing areas of the game. It's like a small maze that you won't enjoy and want to get past it real quick. I feel the same way. And believe me, I memorized all the layouts and went past by everything real fast. But if it's not because of these two subhuman individuals halting my progress, making me spend more time in this horrid place. But enough of this negativity, okay? The good news is, the boss, your boy Victor is one of the easier ones. A pipe wrench will be my weapon of choice with the same glaive handle. This did the job very well. Now with Victor, it's completely turned into a rhythm game. His attacks consist with a triple hit combos or a one hit heavy attack. Almost all of them I can parry. Except this one. It's not because I couldn't parry them, I was just... I, I was too anxious for some reason. 
Now, I realize at this stage, weapon durability decreases a bit faster and I'm always conscious about it, so I'll be grinding more often. I feel like phase 2 was much easier, he's less likely to do follow-ups on his usual moves, but he does add a couple new moves that might catch me off guard, especially after you break his poise. Compared to Romeo, this fight was like a break time after an intense office work. I feel my weapons deal significantly less damage to bosses and that happened probably because my overall stats. I got another amulet slot added to the P organ but I realized amulets are quite heavy so might need to rearrange them again when using big weapons. So on my previous playthrough, I skipped some bosses by giving out the golden fruit. However, I forgot I don't have any at the moment so I couldn't give my pity to these beggars. The crucial mistake I made was I didn't come back to them. But looking back, that's okay since they were meant to be defeated to redeem my mistake for using the same weapons twice. This is like the worst place in the game. I hate almost every bits of it. Except for the boss. Again, same case with Victor. No, I don't mean he's easy, but I think he's a decent boss with acceptable moves. Definitely has to parry him. Green Monster has simple movesets, however, for me, it took a while to get into his rhythm. Now, I know this boss is weak to fire and using the electric chainsaw wasn't the brightest idea, but it gets the jobs done. Avoid any direct hit from his tentacles as it inflicts decay to my weapon. He has a bunch of windows that I can sneak some hits. It makes me greedy sometimes. Now, there's this move when he turns red and charging towards you. I have to 100% parry that because there is no way to dodge. Or at least, none that I'm aware of. But the parry timing was a bit weird in my opinion. It has to be like 1 inch just right before he hits me. Phase 2. Wow, hello, familiar face here. Not a face, but more tentacles just like what some of you into. But yeah, basically the same movesets uh, with the Watchman before but he added some new follow-ups with the tentacles and also his moves deals a lot more damage than before. Some of them kill me in one hit. I only parry some familiar moves from before and also utilize the flamberge whenever he spin his torso. Now, I do feel he got a weird positioning to repose after he got staggered. That made me miss my shot a few times. There are also two variants of swap attacks, the regular one and the faster one. Always anticipate the fast one, if it usually becomes a follow-up move. I also need to maintain my distance because his grab attack has massive range and it's an insta-kill. But I found a better way to dodge that by dashing forward if I was close enough to him. Everything else is the same, he wasn't that crazy once you get used to him. Yeah, I didn't know my nose could go longer on the painting. There's a secret behind the painting, but after beating the game, I didn't find anything, probably missing something along the way. Anyway, going back to Krat's central station that was already turned into a whole infestation. In this familiar place lies the most brutal motherfucker ever exists. Nope, nope, not the parade master, but this guy. This fucking NPC stalker probably took me two hours to beat. 
It's not like a regular one. I was having a hard time backstabbing this guy. I even rely on these zombies to attack him a little bit. I think you can skip this guy, but I want his outfit as usual, so I'm dealing with his bullshit moves and eventually kill him. This whole going through the same location with visual changes wasn't going smoothly as the mobs are getting stronger and aggressive. It took me a while to master my guarding skill on them. I also choose the Walker of Illusion. Probably the hardest mini boss in my opinion so I spent all my souls to throw everything at it. You can go down the ladder once she aggroed at you and then go up again and spam everything. It's so lame, I know, but I don't care. Oh no! Next boss, also I proudly cheese them. Oh, oh wait, no, not yet. It's Parade Master again. This one's pretty easy, using the Life Puppet eggs to slowly butcher his HP. Most of his moves are the same as previous one, even after they added the new ones, they don't really serve much of a challenge. So they finally kidnap Geppetto and trash the entire hotel lobby. Since this will be one of the hardest boss, if not the hardest boss in this run, or maybe in this game. That's right, the black rabbits are back but this time it will be a gang fight. I thought using Puppet Reaper will help me in a way, but Rich was not the only issue apparently. Unlike previous fight, they deal much more damage now and it seems only one of them aggroing at a time, however the other two can sneak attack you when you are unaware. This is like the Gutskin trio fight. The youngest might be the deadliest out of them, so I really want her dead as fast as possible. But this seems nearly impossible. I have to summon a Spectre to help me to distract them while I'm looking for a slight chance to backstab. It didn't work. Spectre just got obliterated in seconds. So, I make use of the golden fruits to buy some cubes specifically to raise some defense on my Spectre. This helps me for a bit, but still couldn't bring me far enough to beat them even with consumables. Oh yeah, just so you know, after we kill two of them, the eldest one reappear as the final fight. This is the worst fight ever. I forgot I can spend quartz on P organs, so I pick one to increase my pull cell. So after hundreds of attempts, spending hundreds and thousands of ergos for consumables, I found a way to beat them. So the difficult part lays on the early fight. No matter who's a growing first, you might want the youngest one dead. At the same time, use the cube when they are ganging up on the Spectre, just to make him stay longer in the fight. We still have the sword and the spear one, and to prevent the duo fight with the elders happen, I have to kill the last one fast enough before he spawns. Now, to make it happen, I depleted both of them to the same amount of HP and then relentlessly kill them afterwards. This only happened 3 times in 20 hours duration. I need some luck and uh, probably good RNG as well, I don't know, I just want these two enemies. When we couldn't save our brother. The eldest appeared and I need him to kill my spectre so I can throw every single item towards him. I'm doing this very carefully. I don't have time to farm or attempt another gangbang. I'm actually holding my breath. And miracle happened, finally. Yeah, I was expecting a fight. 
Anyway, that fight was so horrible, and I was forced to use my best weapon, the seven coil sword. I planned it to use on Lasatia, but I'll use something else. We took a submarine and landed on the fire festival. To enter this whole massive castle, I have to take down the best design boss in the game, the door guardian. He reminds me of our giant. They have a similar traits of having a weak leg. He might look invulnerable, but after you break his poise, it takes a bunch of the HP. His moves are a bit hard to match, but also very easy to learn after a few tries. I remember exactly this level has a long route to the next main boss. For my second playthrough, I, I thought I can shorten the duration since I still remember where I should go, but I forgot I'm not friends with the stalker siblings, and I have to kill the black cat. Now for my redemption for using the same weapons early on, I have to switch weapons for black cat and red fox. I put together the master chief, master chef blade with glaive handle. I don't know what inspires me to come up with these combinations, but I'm glad that glaive handle works really well for this fight. Something I noticed at this point, I can barely do any backstep towards this NPC, and they become far more of a threat than I could ever imagine. But I was talking about Red Fox, not the Black Cat, sorry, uh, I went ahead of myself. But we're not fighting Red Fox now, as I still have to get through one more long ass route and got halted by Lasasha. Even the developer set a stargazer checkpoint before the fight. That physically shows, she means business. Apparently she is weak to acid, so I prepared my acidic spear with pickaxe handle. I also equipped the pandemonium, but I ended up never using it. My first time experience with her was very sloppy and I barely won against her. But I can confidently say, this time is far worse. However, my pairing skill is turning for better. Now when I said this is far worse, I wasn't talking about first phase. I tried to implement the king of puppet method of no parry but dodge everything. But yeah, this is where I struggle to keep up. Phase 1, most of her attacks are unreasonably slow and I think some moves are better not get parried. Like everything that involves range lighting attacks. But other moves sometimes are a bit fast for me, so I'll avoid that as well. Second phase, I'm doing the opposite. Range lightning must be parried, as they bounce back to her and deal some damage. But be careful when she landed after that, it's gonna kill me right away. It's so hard to apply perfect guard on the right timing. This move specifically killed me countless times. And not only that, if you survive, she becomes very aggressive and I was unable to find good window to attack. The arm of God. I know I have used a bunch of consumables on Black Rabbit, but I genuinely desperate and I resort this with them as well. However, this time having them wouldn't help me if I couldn't dodge or parry most of her moves. I'm so glad I've upgraded most of my defense parts so I could withstand her light attacks. Some of her jumping moves are actual openings, but they could be risky as she usually triggered a combo afterwards. The slash combo bling she does always got me, but luckily they didn't deal too much damage. Even with consumables, this is like 5 or so attempts. Don't even count other attempts without consumables man, that's crazy. I would say Lasatia is the second hardest boss for now.
So this is where this ends on my first playthrough. Yes, I haven't beat the game, not even once. But uh, I reached Sofia before and I know the next boss is Simon Manus after reaching the top of Arki Abbey. Now, I actually forgot I haven't encountered Red Fox after killing Black Cat and now there she is, spreading my ass wide open and then killed me without any mercy. It's nearly impossible to backstab her and her moves are quite fast, at least for a couple of times. She is also pretty beefy, so outspeeding her with dex weapons didn't benefit me in any way. But eventually I tried using another dex weapon that is a Puppet Reaper. I actually plan to use this one for Simon Manus, but this is the only weapon to beat her actually. It actually works better than expected as this long range weapon stagger her upon hit. But I found a better way. See, I haven't really utilized the Legion arm in this run, and fully upgraded Puppet String slams her real good. I feel the dialogue from Geppetto becomes weird. He might be the bad guy behind all of these, I wonder, hmm. So here we go, final boss, Simon Manus. After fighting Lasashia before, I believe Simon wouldn't be a problem at all. That's what you think I would say, right? But no, my point still stands from the beginning of this video. I suck at parrying, I suck at this fucking game. But I get a little bit better and I believe this is what kind of boss you want to parry. I use the Mjolnir set that has decent speed in my opinion, but the damage dealt with heavy attack is quite satisfying. You can basically parry every attack as uh, they're quite easy, even the red ones, but I can just walk backwards and dodge it completely. Now I died quite a lot on phase 2 but I know all of his tricks now. He got some variety of range attacks and you might want to avoid them all. His regular attacks also has some new follow ups that I'm aware of and I only parry the ones that's similar to phase 1 attacks. If I'm not feeling it, I prefer dodging. His regular moves also have slightly shorter wind up. This caught me off guard almost every time but I got used to them now. Some of his range attacks like the satellite cannon and lightning spawners are easy to avoid by running away to a specific direction, but when he throws more than one spawner balls, I usually run towards one of the balls direction. At some point he'll summon a giant hand from above that creates a massive explosion. This is the hard part because even if the hand is slow, I need to save some stamina to run away and dodge a close incoming attacks at the same time. The hand usually interrupts my openings. Yeah, I used the Acid Grindstone, but the effects worn out already before landing more damage. Second phase really took my patience to another level, but it's much better fight than Lasashia. By better, I mean easier. Also, gotta be careful with breaking his poise. He's one of those bosses with counter attacks before stagger. Okay, there we go, final boss done, thanks for watching, and I'll see, no, no, not yet, not yet, uh, there is one last boss I have to beat, so yeah, I'm glad other stuffs helped me all the way through without leveling up at all, yeah, I, I was talking about consumables, yeah, thank you very much, game, although most of my air goes when to either consumables or weapon upgrades, Simon's ergo can be exchanged with Elden Ring starting weapon, and I'm going to use that for Nameless Puppet, also this weapon's favorite art consumes ergo, I was wondering why my ergo decreased for no reason. Give me your heart, 
bezahlen. I believed you were a good boy. Oh wait, Geppetto! What are you doing? Secret boss? You motherfucker. I'm already tired of this game. Let me rest. My son. Alright, so I wanna ask you guys. Do you think the nameless puppet is the hardest boss in the game? He's hard for sure. I barely hit him at all at my first attempts. But probably I think I spent the same amount of time fighting him as with the black rabbits. And nameless puppet is just so fun to fight. I know you have gone But I need more pull cell just to tank his second phase. Nameless Puppet has two different styles in first phase. Early on, he'll show the slow rhythm attacks that are easy to parry and you might want to parry everything. It took me quite long to get his timing, but once you get it, it's very easy to notice which moves he's about to pull. I know you have Now the other style is the faster one. Most of his fast attacks has two or more follow-ups and some of them are ended with red heavy attack. Usually when he backs off, he changes the style. But still, you can parry all of his moves. I did get hit a little bit because I was a bit distracted, but they can all be parried. Now for second phase, apparently spamming the parry button on your mouse or controller might get the job done, but once you accidentally mess with the rhythm, you're done. I did learn his movement speed, so I kinda get the timing a little bit, but other moves I prefer to dodge. Also I have Eggy's shield just to block one specific heavy attack from him. Unfortunately I couldn't pull counter attack as I bounced a bit too far to land a hit. I noticed this fight actually decreases the weapon durability quite fast, so every time I had a chance to grind it, I have to do it. Even after understanding his moves, I still couldn't keep up with most of his attacks. That's why I barely did any perfect guard, and other moves I just completely dodged them, if my stamina could cover that. So to stagger him, I have to deal heavy charge towards him and I think it's a bit difficult to find a decent window but fortunately he likes to walk towards me directly and it's actually far from easy but unlike the black rabbits, this one's pretty fun. I was planning to make my hair white, but apparently I missed some stuffs along the way, so yeah, maybe on New Game Plus. And also, um, yeah, I actually have to use like a perfect guard on some occasions, but yeah, I don't know, I think I miss some of the supply box because I couldn't find it in the shop. Anyway, yeah, this game is hard, man, but I'm having fun, and I'm definitely not gonna get good soon. But at the very least, I hope you find this entertaining as this took me almost two weeks to record. So please give it a like and subscribe if you do, I really appreciate it. Also special thanks to channel members for supporting this channel even more, y'all really helped me for real. Okay so um, it's time for me to go back to Dark Souls 3 and beat Midir, probably gonna upload that later. Check out my second channel, we'll upload more on that as well. Alright, see you later, goodbye.